It's a wonderful day in Mpumalanga in South Africa, the grasslands of South Africa. And today I'm off to Zabulo Colliery, which might sound like a strange place to visit for photography. But actually, it's a wonderful location for photographing birds at water level. So I'm pretty excited about today, despite the fact that I got up at 3 in the morning. Uh, and I've got about 60 kilometers to go, so I just wanted to check in quickly with you guys, tell you what I was up to, and uh, head on over there. One of my absolute favorite things to do is to take pictures of birds at water level. Now, it's not easy to do in South Africa because a lot of the time, the water that we do have is in a national park uh, and we can't get out and get into it. Uh, otherwise, the water we have can be uh, disease ridden. So waterborne diseases like Bilharzia uh, are quite dangerous or uh, there are dangerous animals, snakes, hippos, crocodiles even, in the water. But one exception to that is the uh, grassland ponds around Sabulo Colliery in Umpumulanga. And I'm sitting at my favorite water level hide today, and it's a dugout cement hide sitting in this pristine pond that has been rehabilitated by the colliery. As, uh, as a place for photographers to come. It's free, you can just turn up uh, and you can sit here all day and take beautiful photographs just with your lens a few inches off the water. it when you do a long piece to camera and forget to hit the record button. That's what I've just done. Very irritating. While I'm sitting here waiting for some subjects to turn up, I thought I'd share some of my settings that I use for taking pictures of birds in flight. Now I have a white-throated swallow which is a white and sort of iridescent dark blue bird that's coming in occasionally and landing on a perch about 10 meters away from me. And I want to capture this bird in flight, either against a grassy bank, the water, or the sky. Now this presents a problem for any automated, automatic mode, so aperture priority, shutter priority, or uh, auto ISO. I like to shoot these in these conditions in manual mode. And what that allows me to do is to expose for the bird rather than allow the camera to choose the exposure based on the background it sees because it won't see that tiny bird and expose for it even with spot focus even if you can keep your spot on the bird while it's flying erratically so in order to use manual what we need to do is consider the exposure but also the conditions we need to capture that bird in flight in order to capture it in flight it's moving fast we need a fast shutter speed a relatively deep depth of field because the bird will move front to back in the frame as it moves through the shot. And we therefore need to ramp our ISO a little bit in order to achieve those settings. 
uh, our aperture as well. We, we can use a, a slightly narrower aperture. The narrower the better in these conditions because the background is quite far away in order to catch that bird in flight. Because when we narrow that aperture, what it does is it increases our depth of field and allows for some error when we focus on the bird. The other thing I'm going to do, and I'm going to use this zoom lens to do it, is dial back the focal length a little bit. So I'm not going to use the extreme focal length which will make the bird big in the frame. One, because that bird will be difficult to track if it's big in the frame. But two, and more importantly, that dialing back of the fo focal length will actually also increase the depth of field available to us. So I'm going to focus on this perch with the bird on it with these settings dialed in, in manual mode, which allows me to expose for the bird and not the background. And I'm going to keep that bird in the corner of the frame. And he's going to over, off, uh, take off into the wind from left to right. The wind is blowing this way across the scene. And I should be able to get a few frames of him before he disappears out of the frame and I'm unable to follow him. In, him. So, bearing all that in mind, I just want to mention how I choose the exposure for these shots. I generally don't use the bird. I know the bird is slightly darker than middle grey. Now I have a grass bank over there and grass is basically middle grey. So if I focus my camera on that bank and take the exposure of that bank, it's going to give me the settings that I talked about. 1 two thousandths of a, set a, a second, ISO 1000 and F9. Now you'll obviously have different conditions when you do this, but use that grass bank for middle grey. Now my bird is slightly darker, so I'm going to dial in two thirds of a stop over exposure. And what that's going to do is allow my exposure in manual mode to stay steady through all of my shots, and it won't change the exposure based on my background, which is very important for this kind of photography. Right, it's very quiet here. I think what I'm going to do is go and visit some of the other hides at Zabulo and show you what they're about. One of the great things about this place is there's more than one location. Well, there you have it. Well, guys, I think it's time for me to head home. The clouds have come in, the birds have gone to sleep, and uh, it's a long drive.